Hey, hello. Thanks for coming back. And here we are, day number 76, reading Numbers 14, Psalm 34, and our first reading in Luke 22. We get to touch and hold in our hands and listen to God's eternal word. Turning to Numbers 14, Yesterday, we again found out what the Lord thinks when we grumble against him. Let's remember Miriam. Then the Lord commanded to send out the spies, but after taking stock of the land of Canaan, they brought an evil, unbelieving report, forgetting all the miracles the Lord had done to bring them out of Egypt. Numbers 14 All night long the people cried out in distress. They complained against Moses and Aaron and said, It would have been better to die in Egypt or even here in the wilderness. Why is the Lord taking us into that land? We will be killed in battle. Our wives and children will be captured. Wouldn't it be better to go back to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let's choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron bowed to the ground in front of all the people, and Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, two of the spies, tore their clothes in sorrow and said to the people, The land we explored is an excellent land. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will take us there and give us that rich and fertile land. Do not rebel against the Lord, and don't be afraid of the people who live there. We will conquer them easily. The Lord is with us and has defeated the gods who protected them. So don't be afraid. The whole community was threatening to stone them to death. But suddenly the people saw the dazzling light of the Lord's presence appear over the tent. The Lord said to Moses, How much longer will these people reject me? How much longer will they refuse to trust in me, even though I have performed so many miracles among them? I will send an epidemic and destroy them, but I will make you the father of a nation that is larger and more powerful than they are. But Moses said to the Lord, You brought these people out of Egypt by your power, When the Egyptians hear what you have done to your people, they will tell it to the people who live in this land. These people have already heard that you, the Lord, are with us, and that you appear in plain sight when your cloud stops over us, and that you go before us in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now if you kill all your people, the nations who have heard of your fame will say that you killed your people in the wilderness because you were not able to bring them into the land you promised to give them. So now, Lord, I pray, show us your power and do what you promised when you said, I, the Lord, am not easily angered, and I show great love and faithfulness and forgive sin and rebellion. Yet I will not fail to punish children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation for the sins of their parents. And now, Lord, according to the greatness of your unchanging love, forgive, I pray, the sin of these people, just as you have forgiven them ever since they left Egypt. The Lord answered, I will forgive them as you have asked. But I promise that as surely as I live and as surely as my presence fills the earth, none of these people will live to enter that land. They have seen the dazzling light of my presence and the miracles that I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but they have tried my patience over and over again and have refused to obey me. They will never enter the land which I promised to their ancestors. None of those who have rejected me will ever enter it. But because my servant Caleb has a different attitude and has remained loyal to me, 
I will bring him into the land which he explored, and his descendants will possess the land in whose valleys the Amalekites and the Canaanites now live. Turn back tomorrow and go into the wilderness in the direction of the Gulf of Aqaba. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How much longer are these wicked people going to complain against me? I have heard enough of these complaints. Now give them this answer. I swear that as surely as I live, I will do to you just what you have asked. I, the Lord, have spoken. You will die, and your corpses will be scattered across the wilderness, because you have complained against me. None of you over twenty years of age will enter that land. I promised to let you live there, but not one of you will except Caleb and Joshua. You said that your children would be captured, but I will bring them into the land that you rejected, and it will be their home. You will die here in the wilderness. Your children will wander in the wilderness for forty years, suffering for your unfaithfulness, until the last one of you dies. You will suffer the consequences of your sin for forty years, one year for each of the forty days you spent exploring the land. You will know what it means to have me against you. I swear that I will do this to you wicked people who have gathered together against me. Here in the wilderness, every one of you will die. I, the Lord, have spoken. The men Moses had sent to explore the land brought back a false report which caused the people to complain against the Lord. And so the Lord struck them with a disease, and they died. Of the twelve spies, only Joshua and Caleb survived. When Moses told the Israelites what the Lord had said, they mourned bitterly. Early the next morning they started out to invade the hill country, saying, Now we are ready to go to the place which the Lord told us about. We admit that we have sinned. But Moses said, Then why are you disobeying the Lord now? You will not succeed. Don't go. The Lord is not with you, and your enemies will defeat you. When you face the Amalekites and the Canaanites, you will die in battle. The Lord will not be with you, because you have refused to follow him. Yet they still dared to go up into the hill country, even though neither the Lord's covenant box nor Moses left the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived there attacked and defeated them and pursued them as far as Horma. We turn to Psalm 34. This is another acrostic psalm. I cannot write an introduction that is better than the one already written by the ancient rabbis. The Hebrew title is, By David, who left the presence of Abimelech after pretending to be crazy and was sent away by him. We haven't read that story yet in our reading this year. It was not one of David's finest hours. Psalm 34 I will always thank the Lord. I will never stop praising Him. I will praise Him for what He has done. May all who are oppressed listen and be glad. Proclaim with me the Lord's greatness. Let us praise His name together. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. The oppressed look to him and are glad. They will never be disappointed. The helpless call to him, and he answers. He saves them from all their troubles. 
His angel guards those who honor the Lord and rescues them from danger. Find out for yourself how good the Lord is. Happy are those who find safety with Him. Honor the Lord, all His people. Those who obey Him have all they need. Even young lions go hungry for lack of food, but those who obey the Lord lack nothing good. Come, my young friends, and listen to me, and I will teach you to honor the Lord. Would you like to enjoy life? Do you want long life and happiness? Then keep from speaking evil and from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Strive for peace with all your heart. The Lord watches over the righteous and listens to their cries, but He opposes those who do evil, so that when they die, they are soon forgotten. The righteous call to the Lord, and He listens. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who are discouraged. He saves those who who have lost all hope. Good people suffer many troubles, but the Lord saves them from them all. The Lord preserves them completely. Not one of their bones is broken. Evil will kill the wicked. Those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord will save His people. Those who go to Him for protection will be spared. We turn for the first time to Luke 22. Yesterday in chapter 21, we heard Jesus' prophecy about what will happen in judgment upon Jerusalem before His return. Luke 22 The time was near for the festival of unleavened bread, which is also called the Passover. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were afraid of the people, and so they were trying to find a way of putting Jesus to death secretly. Then Satan entered into Judas, the man from the village of Carioth, who was one of the twelve disciples. So Judas went off and spoke with the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard about how he could betray Jesus to them. They were pleased and offered to pay him money. Judas agreed to it and started looking for a good chance to hand Jesus over to them without the people knowing about it. The day came during the festival of unleavened bread when the lambs for the Passover meal were to be killed. Jesus sent Peter and John with these instructions, Go and get the Passover meal ready for us to eat. Where do you want us to get it ready? they asked him. He answered, As you go into the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the room where my disciples and I will eat the Passover meal? He will show you a large, furnished, upstairs room where you will get everything ready. They went off and found everything just as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles. He said to them, I have wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will never eat it again until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup, gave thanks to God, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from now on I will not drink this wine until the kingdom of God comes. 
Then he took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way he gave them the cup after supper, saying, This cup is God's new covenant sealed with my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, the one who betrays me is here at the table with me. I, the Son of Man, will die as God has decided. But how terrible for that man who betrays me! Then they began to ask among themselves which one of them it could be who was going to do this. An argument broke out among the disciples as to which one of them should be thought of as the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the pagans have power over their people, and the rulers claim the title friends of the people. But this is not the way it is with you. Rather, the greatest among you must be like the youngest, and the leader must be like the servant. Who is greater, the one who sits down to eat or the one who serves? The one who sits down, of course. But I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me all through my trials, and just as my Father has given me the right to rule, so I will give you the same right. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones to rule over the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has received permission to test all of you, to separate the good from the bad, as a farmer separates the wheat from the chaff. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your belief in me will not fail, and when you turn back to me, you must strengthen your brothers. Peter, whose other name was Simon, answered, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you and to die with you. Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow tonight until you have said three times that you do not know me. Then Jesus asked his disciples, When I sent you out that time without a wallet, bag, or shoes, did you lack anything? Not a thing, they answered. Then Jesus said, But now whoever has a wallet or a bag must take it, and whoever does not have a sword must sell his coat and buy one. For I tell you that the scripture which says he shared the fate of criminals must come true about me, because what is written about me is coming true. The disciples said, Look, here are two swords, Lord. That's enough, he replied. We have some things to pray about today. Our Heavenly Father, and the one who has loved us so much, I am stunned now as I see how we humans stumble unaware through life and have no idea of what we're doing or of who you are. The children of Israel had seen such wonderful miracles, and yet they could refuse to believe in you and refuse to believe what you told them to do. After all those things, starting in Egypt and at Mount Sinai, And they're not alone. David, after writing beautiful psalms and praising you and being taken from taking care of sheep to being a general in an army and married to the king's daughter, could totally lose his way as well. And yet you protected him. And the disciples... 
right at the table with the Lord when he has told them the most precious truths, could start arguing among themselves as to which is the greatest. And then that evening Peter would deny even knowing the Lord. Lord, given these facts, what's the chance that I or my listener are going to be able to obey you and to live wisely? Lord, we come to you for your help and your protection. Lord, help us, because there's no chance that we will know what to do. Let us say with David, I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. The helpless call to him, and he answers. He saves them from all their troubles. Yes, Lord, save us. Your angel guards those who honor you, Lord, and rescues them from danger. O oh, Lord, we trust already. We trust already, but please help us to find out for ourselves how good you are. Happy are those who find their safety with you. Lord, keep us from speaking evil and from telling lies. Turn us away from evil and help us to do good. Help us to strive for peace with all our hearts. Lord, you save your people, and those who go to you for protection will be spared. When we are tested, Lord, help us not to give up our faith in the Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, be with us today.